You know, a lot of these vehicles that come in are kind of basket cases. Not everything is, but it seems like recently most of them are. So it's a struggle not only to figure out what they were when they were new, but also try to weed through the different things that have been done to them through the years, because they've had repairs done to them off and on at different times by different people and at different skill levels. So I'm trying to sort through a lot of this stuff and go back to what was it when it was new. It's like on this sheep wagon that I've been working on, you know, it came in with this little single axle Model T wheels under it. Well, that was 40 years after this wagon was built. So it had wood wheels under it, so we had to go back and do that. Well, it's similar on this Smith Great Western Spreader. It has had a lot of wear and tear, and there have been different things that have been fixed and repaired and changed. Well, part of that is filtering through some of the changes that have been done on this rear beater assembly as it spreads the manure across the field. And this is some of the things that I'm running into. So this is all the wood that I have gathered up that came off of the beater assembly itself. And it is all weathered, aged, deteriorated, and all kind of looks the same. So I have a couple here that have got some spikes in them. And then they have this tin that's been tacked on top so that these spikes don't come out. There's a second one here. We have some that are wide with these same spikes. And they actually kind of look like they've been maybe nails that were cut off, big spike nails. And then there are some that are more square, slightly rectangular, more close to that inch and a half, inch and three quarter. And these three eight spikes are just driven in and then cross riveted. And there's several of those that are of that style. This one is the most intact. And then there's some that have spikes that have actually had threads and nuts put on them to keep them in these crossbars. But when I look at these iron castings that hold each of these bars, it looks like they are about two and an eighth and probably an inch and a half to inch and three quarters thick. So I'm assuming they need to fit within these parameters here. And it looks like there's a carriage bolt that goes down and is nutted on this end. So that caused me to rule out these real wide bars that have been tapered down to this two inch or so. I think these were added on, so that makes me wonder if these spikes with these metal tabs on top or these metal strips, these were also a repair after the original. So these two I'm gonna kick out. And then these style of spikes I think also were an afterthought for a repair perhaps that maybe they decided, well, this is a good way to keep these spikes in. Maybe they were starting to wear out and they weren't keeping these original spikes tight anymore. But I think this is also a repair spike. So that boiled it down in my mind that these with the driven in 3 8 spikes are the original with the cross rivets. There was somebody that sent me a short clip uh, you know, these shorts that everybody's doing now that looks at an old original Smith Great Western Spreader. It also denotes these crossbars and the size and the cross pins with a good close up. So that is my second witness that this is the original as well. So I need to make eight of these.
So since there's very few of you that let anything that I do slip by your attention, you're really quite a scrutinizing bunch. You'll notice that I did something different on these beater bars than what was on the old original ones. Did you catch what it was? On these original ones, they used a flat head or what we call a truss head rivet. It's a quarter inch. But on the side that they riveted, they did not put a washer underneath. They just flared the end out and called that good enough. That's how all of them were. Now it is going to add some resistance against this splitting. So you probably noticed I put a washer underneath each of my rivets. The holding power is far better. It's the same truss head rivet on the other side, but I put washers underneath my rivets. Even looking at these old rivets, you can see how much a decay has been in this wood. And that's how I determine the width of this wood is from the flange of this riveted end to the flange of this head. And that is two inches or strong. I made mine actually two and an eighth to fit the casting on the beater itself. Since the distance between these two casting faces here was two and an eighth, that's what I made my wood. So these end up adding support against that splitting also. Well, I could salvage a few of these 3 8 pins, but I'm not going to. When I did the center roller down the center of this bed, I did some test fitting to my bits and new 3 8 round stock, and I found that they fit really snug. When I sandblasted these, they were a little bit loose into the bit that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and make all new spikes for these beaters that go into these new bars. Now this is the heavy casting with that bushing that is driven by a chain here and that wore this bushing out. If you remember, I had to rebuild that bushing. Well, this pin was also broken off, so I replaced that pin. Well, on this pin, there is a pretty hefty iron that fits right in there in behind this cog. Kind of about like so. Well, it comes up and stops on this little knob that's sticking out here. And I'm not sure what this iron is called, but there should be a washer up against the, this iron here. And then there's going to be a little cotter pin that holds that in. I don't have that washer ready yet, but that's what's going to hold it in place. And the bottom of this iron has kind of a unique little bend and it steps out so that it goes past this roller chain that's going to be running on this cog. Well, on the right side, that knob was still there, and there is a similar iron that mounts on that and then stops up around this casting. And this is also held in with a washer and a cotter pin. I'm just going to put the pin in for now. Well, the top of these irons are bent at a 90 degrees, and they go towards each other. This is the left side. And this is the bend on the top of the one on the right side. Well, there's a two inch wide board by inch and a half thick that goes between these two and gets bolted on each of these angles. So this is the apparatus that sets on those two irons that I just put on each side of the rear that hover over the top of the beater. This piece of wood here is what I just fastened to those irons, and these are the two holes that bolts to that iron. So there's a second bar that's parallel to this bar that is bolted to these two irons that we just looked at. And these are actually connected by this kind of a U-shaped clevis type iron spring-loaded. Well, coming out of this second bar are these iron spikes that fit up inside in some form of a fashion, like so. So in order for these to be fastened in here, I need to take this off. And we'll see that there is a channel that has been cut into this bottom 
wood bar. So these spikes come through a hole and they set in this channel. And then this wood cap is actually nailed on top of this to keep these in place. You can kind of see how that's going to work. They sit in about like so. So this whole assembly will sit upright like so, and these irons stand upright. Well, these spikes are above the spikes of the beater, and as the beater is thrashing this manure, these are also thrashing it on top, breaking it down as it is being spread. Well, as that force of the manure is hitting here, this is spring-loaded through this whole assembly here. So anyway, I need a second bar that has a channel cut down through the middle of one side just deep enough to accommodate the bend on these spikes. So the heads of these spikes should recess down inside this groove and we'll actually drill a hole through so it recesses down about like so. And it's a little tough to tell the spacing because this is so rotted out, but it almost looks like these set in these spots. So if I just kind of get a rough guess, these look like they're every three inches whereas the ones in the beater were every four inches. So these spring-loaded irons are in six inches from each end, pretty close. So I'm overall 56 inches, so if I take off 12 inches, I end up with 44 inches between these two bolts. So if I divide that out by three inches roughly, I end up with about 15 spaces, which will give me 14 spikes. You can also see that it's going to come in with one spike and then these have cross bolts and then one, two, three spikes and then another cross bolt, one, two, three spikes, another cross bolt. So these are bolted, but I think I'm going to put rivets in so that they'll be the same as the rivets in the beater bars. So this is where I'm going to end up and my spacings are about the same with my rivets as they are with the old bolts. I have seven of these original spikes for the upper bar, so I need 14. I've got to make seven more. Well, this is how the upper assembly with the spikes coming down that's hovering above the beaters was positioned on this spreader. This is upright and this spring is toward the back. This bar here is what is bolted to the two uprights on each side of the rear. So I have pictures where this is also shown with this spring to the front. In both cases, whether the spring is to the rear or the spring is to the forward section, the whole purpose of this spring is to allow the pressure when the manure is hitting this direction on their spikes on the upper side that allows some flexibility in this compression spring. So whether the spring is on this side or this side, the function is the same. This one, however, was still mounted, so that's where I'm going to leave it. Well, I have the bars for the beater and these two bars for the spikes above the beaters all coated with their first coat of red paint, functioning as the primer. I'll go ahead and let this cure while I make the spikes for the beaters and the seven remaining spikes for this upper bar.
Well, there's 12 spikes on each of these bars for the beater, and there's eight bars total on the beater. So there's 96 spikes that I had to make, and I've got my other seven made for the upper spikes. So I'll get these painted, let this cure a little bit, and most likely we're gonna put this together for next week. Appreciate you coming along. Thanks for watching.